Hey, Board Gang Maniacs, Maniac Rob here with a bunch of other Maniacs. Special treat today. What we're going to play is we're going to play Betrayal at House on the Hill. And if you have not watched anything about Betrayal at House on the Hill, you can look it up online or you can click on the link below and you can uh, see the tutorial that we did. I just did an unboxing video, even though it's been open and played several, several times by us Maniacs here. But we're just going to play it. Uh, again, we're going to see what happens. You don't really know with this game what's going to happen because it depends on when the haunt goes off. And when the haunt goes off, all hell can break loose. One of us here are going to be a traitor. And usually when we play this game, I'm going to be the traitor all the time. But right now, if I get the traitor, I'm going to whip out and get somebody else like Keisha right here to be the traitor. So before we go any further, just to introduce everybody again, that uh, Maniac Wolf, Maniac Shane... Maniac Poison, Maniac Keisha, and Maniac Maggot Beard, or Lance, whatever you want to call him. So anyhow, Bravo. just stay tuned, keep an eye on the board, and see who's betrayed and see who dies. And we're all started here. Shane did a nice job in the organizing of it all. We got Keisha here. We're going to go over what character is which and how we start playing the game briefly. But again, if you want to know how to play the game... Uh, in more detail, just click on the link below and you'll go to the uh, gameplay uh, rules, I should say. The rule discussion that I'm going to have. So, I'm playing Darren the Flash Williams. And his hobbies is track, music, Shakespearean literature. His birthday is June 6th, age 20, height 5'11", and weight 188 pounds. And you can see these are physical traits of so speed and might. And you have sanity and knowledge, which is your mental traits. So, again, that's where I am. I'm Darren Flash Williams. We're going to go on and see what everybody else is. So just stand by. Keisha has Professor Longfellow. So tell us about Professor Longfellow up there, Keisha. He has speed, might, sanity, and knowledge. He's 57 years old. He's 5'11", weighs 153 pounds. His hobbies are Gaelic music, drama, fine wines. And his birthday is July 27th. July 27th is his birthday. Okay. So before we go any further, uh, how you determine who is first player is whoever has their character closest to today's date. And we'll determine that after we go over each character. So Shane, who do you have? Uh, I have Zoe Engstrom. Uh, she's 8 years old. She's 3'9". She weighs <laughs> 49 pounds. Her hobbies are dolls and music. Her birthday is November 5th. All right, so you're a little child. I am. And Keisha's an old man. I know. We got this backwards, I think. He, he, I think so. And, uh, well, I'm 5'11", and I am, uh, I'm like an athlete, so that's exactly yeah, that's bang on and spot on. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay, so Lance, what do you have? I got Jenny LeClerc. Jenny who? LeClerc. LeClerc? Is Clerk. she a clerk? I don't know. She could be. All right, so what's her stats? Her age is 21. Her height's 5'7". She weighs in at 142. Her hobbies are reading and soccer, and her birthday is March 4th. March 4th. Reading and soccer. What She's nice hobbies boring. to have. Yeah. All right there, uh, Wolf, what do you got? I've got Brandon Jaspers, and he is age 12, height 5'1", weight 109. His hobbies are computers, camping, and hockey, and his birthday is May 21st. Yeah. And your hobbies again? Computers, camping, and hockey. Computers, camping, and hockey. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And Christy? Oh, uh, poison. Christy, poison. I have Madame Zostra, or however it's pronounced. Zostra. 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 I'm going to be a gypsy tonight. Uh, her age is 37. Her height is 5 foot. Her weight is 150 pounds. Her hobbies include astrology, cooking, and baseball. Birthday, December 10th. Okay, so we're going to determine who goes first, who's closest to today's date, and then we'll start the game. We're going to go first, and Keisha, well, Keisha's character, has the closest birthday to today's date. Off by only a little bit. So, Keisha, you're going to go first, and then we're just going to continue on to Shane, Lance, Thomas, Christy, and myself. So, let's begin the haunted house and see what happens. On betrayal at haunted house. Just a, a little correction there. Everybody is reefing on me and picking and poking at me because I said the name of the game wrong. It's betrayal at house on the hill. 
Now, we're also playing with the expansion. There's only one expansion out for this game, and it is called the Widow's Walk. Now, we mixed all of the cards together. We didn't get any extra characters. It is a six-player game, up to six-player game, I should say. Now, we've all here played it once or twice, except for Keisha. So, Keisha is very new to this game, so we're going to guide her off camera as well as on camera. And anybody else who has troubles with this game or had never played it before... It's a very simple game to, to grasp onto, as everybody here can agree. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun. It is highly rated. So we're going to start the hunt, and we'll see what happens. So Keisha, Professor Longfellow, what are you going to do? I'm going to go up to here. Okay, so Shane, could you get a ground floor, and she'll explore? All right. We've pulled the treehouse. Uh, put a plant token on any door on the roof or upper floor. This room is adjacent to that door. Okay. Keisha's treehouse that she drew. She also has an icon. So you're going to come up against. Uh, you're going to come up against styles like this one here. And this here icon means it's an event card. So Keisha's going to have to draw an event card. Now there's some. Icon such as an omen card. It looks like a, a raven or a crow. Once you draw one of them, your turn automatically ends, and you read and you do exactly what the card says. Well, these here you have to do what the card says also too as well when you draw them, but you can still continue a turn. So Keisha pulled the event card, and the event card says footsteps. Um, I'm not going to just go through all the details. Pretty much what it's saying is she heard footsteps and then when it got close to her, it suddenly disappeared. So she gets to take one die and she has to roll it and we have to compare it to what the card says. So Keisha, roll the die in the die chart. Blank. So, in here it says, if you can get that in focus, zero. Each explorer loses one point from a trade of his or her choice. Lovely. So, all of us has to lose one point from something here. So it could be might, stanima, uh, sanity. It, it don't really matter what it is, but what's really good to do is pick one that is the highest or will, when it goes down one, it's not gonna affect anything. What did you just say off camera there? Well, I'm gonna choose to lower my knowledge skill because it's at three. It'll go down to two, but then I'm not much closer to dying. So if I die before the haunt starts, I just get to respawn at original stats. So I'm going to choose that and try to sacrifice myself so that when the haunt starts, I'm still at full stats. Good strategy. Yeah, so again, as Shane said too as well, is you can die, and you can purposely die, you just accidentally die, as long as it's before the haunt goes off. And then you just respawn into the entrance hallway. Now, if you die during the haunt, well, after the haunt comes off, you're dead and you don't come back, and that's, that's just that. So let's go on to Lance's turn. Shane's turn. So Shane, what are you going to do? Uh, well, I've got a speed of four, so I think I'm just going to zip up this way and take the plant route up to the roof landing. Oh, so uh, in that tile that Keisha drew, there was a plant, and you could it's pretty much like a secret passage. Yeah, pretty much. So you went up to the roof landing. And I still have one more speed left, so I'm going to explore one room. Let's see what's going to happen. So what did you draw? Well, I drew the rookery. It's... Uh, when discovered, I search the room stack, which is all the stacks of random rooms, and I just place a random room. Oh, and you also have an omen oh, card that, too, as yeah. well. I so that. first, you're going to draw the uh, the stack, and then he's going to pull the omen card, and then we have to do a haunt roll. So every time we draw an omen card, what happens is you do what it says on the card, and then you have to roll for the haunt. Shane drew uh, the crypt, which is a basement card, and put it there, but he's not in this, so he don't get to draw the event card. So whenever somebody goes here, they will draw the event card, but once it's drawn once, um, I don't think you don't draw the card anymore. You only draw cards in newly explored rooms, but again, this is new, so whoever lands here first gets to draw the event card for that. All right, Shane, so you're going to do read the omen card, and then we're going to do the omen hunt roll. All right. I got the medallion, a medallion inscribed with a pentagram. I am immune to the effects of the pentagram, chamber, crypt, and graveyard. And I have to make a haunt roll. Oh, awesome. Alright, I'm going to make my haunt roll. I have to get under a one. Oh. Um, I think you passed yeah, under sure the one. I that, yeah. So for whoever's not familiar with making a haunt roll, every time you draw an omen card, 
you get a tracker, a fancy tracker like this, and you'll have to move the notch up. And when you do a haunt roll, you have to roll six die, and what happens is you have to get equal or less than what the value is. So Shane drew an almond card, so it's one almond card. He had to get one or less, and as you can tell, it didn't go off. So we're safe for now. So it's on the Lance's turn, and your character again? Jenny LeClerc. Jenny LeClerc. She's got speed of four. So I'm going to go up one. Hello, I'm Jenny. Up one and to the left? Yep. So there's that, and going this way. So exploring a tile and moving on. Found the dining room. Oh, and look what you drew. Another omen card. No, another omen card is right. I better get that in focus there. Um, the camera, I'm trying a new camera tonight too as well, folks. So it may be at a little out of focus from time to time and a little shaky. I don't know how well this is going to do. So hopefully it'll be really good and we can keep using it. If not, I'll switch to my other camera. So Lance, draw your omen card and read it. The crystal ball. Hazy images appear in the glass. Once during your turn after the haunt is revealed, you can attempt a knowledge roll to peer into the crystal ball. Four plus, you see the truth. Search the item or event stack of for a card of your choice. Shuffle that stack, then place that card on top. One to three, you avert your eyes, lose one sanity. Zero, you stare into hell, lose two sanity. Make haunt roll now. Lovely. So before you make the haunt roll, you have to resolve the card first. We move the, the haunt tracker up one. Now Lance takes the six dice and he's got to roll. So you have to get two or lower. Higher. I think I got that. Yes, if you got two or lower, that means haunt will go off. There's a four there. You're going to hear some extra voices going on, folks, and that's just because we have a Friday the 13th comp video game competition going on upstairs. So you're going to hear a lot of screaming and some killing and everything else, and it's just the competition that's going upstairs. Just to let you know, we're not killing anybody yet. You are Pee-wee, Pee-wee. No, Brandon. Oh, Pee-wee, Brandon, don't matter. Okay, where are you going? All right, I am actually going to head straight this way. I'm going to Feeling the tile. So Thomas drew a patio with an event card. So now he draws the event card and reads it. All right, Thomas, what you got? I've got what the? As you look back the way you came, you see nothing. Just empty fog and mist where a room used to be. Pick up the tile from the room you are, you are in after setting everything on it aside. Put it somewhere else on the same floor of the house so it, its door is attached to a different unexplored doorway. And put back everything you set aside. If there isn't any unexplored doorway on this floor, move the room to a different floor. Interesting. All right. All right. And that is where it goes. And I think you still have some more movement left. Yes, I do. All right. Thomas drew the arsenal. You're going to hear a lot of all rights and so's in this game, just like the other videos. It is just a habit of mine, so just suck it up. So with the arsenal, he has this icon, which is an item card, and he also has this icon. Now, this here is with the new expansion, if I'm not mistaken, and it's a dumbwaiter. And what that means is that you can go in this dumbwaiter and you can travel to another room on no matter what floor it is, as long as it has this other dumbwaiter icon. So in the arsenal, it's said to, so I'm just letting the camera get in focus there. When you draw an item card from the broom, pretty much you get to draw two item cards and pick one. Yep. So Thomas, do your damage. Ooh, two nice cards you got there, Thomas. Yes. Which one are you going to pick? I have no idea at this moment. I gotta figure out exactly what each one does. Hmm, that dynamite looks really good. Mm -hmm. Again, when you draw these item cards, you don't keep them to yourself, you lay them on the table so anybody else that could be in the same spot as you can share with you, or if you want to be an idiot, you can fight somebody to try to steal one of their cards. So, I don't know how we're going to play this tonight. We may play as idiots, or we may play as a group. We locket. will see. You know what? I'm actually going to take the locket. The locket? Yeah. Alright. No armor card was drawn. 
So Thomas still has some moves left. So where are you going to go now, Thomas? Are you going to go back the way you came, or are you going to keep exploring? I'm going to keep exploring. All right. right. That way. You found the theater. Oh, the theater. And, of course, it's an omen card, and we all know what happens. Card say. So for my omen card, I got letter, scrawled in ink, or whatever. You may hand one of your explorer tokens, but that to another explorer. On your turn, you may move to that explorer's room, then discard this omen, and the explorer discards your explorer token. Make a haunt roll now. All right, so are you going to give your explorer token to anybody here? Or are you going to just hold it for now? Give it to me, I'm up on the roof. I think I may hold on to it just for now. Okay, so the haunt track, Shane moved up to three right now, so you have to get above three. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So the Han is not triggered. Let's go on to Christy's turn. So, Madame Zolstra. Madame Zolstra is going this way. This way. This way. Holy to the God. Awesome. And you get an event card. I got Shrieking Wind. The wind picks up a slow crescendo uh, to a screeching howl. Each explorer in the garden, graveyard, patio, tower, on the balcony, or in a room with an outside facing window, must attempt a mite roll. And then in comparison to the numbers. According to the chair. All right, so let's see if anybody is there. Madame Zolstra is in the garden, and this is on one of the cards. So you have to make a, a mite roll. Mm -hmm. So what is your mite? My mite is four. So I've got to roll four dice. All right, and compared to the chair. So you get three. And what does the chart say? Then wind knocks you down. Take one die of physical damage. Oh, so take one die and roll it and see what you get. Come on, nothing. Yay! Nothing. All right, so if she got anything other than zero or nothing, she gets to choose either between her speed or her might, because this is physical. This is mental, your sanity and knowledge. But she was lucky and rolled nothing, so she's safe. So the only other person that's affected... I think is uh, lovely Lance, Lance right there. Lovely. So Lance got to make a mite roll. Mite roll. What's your mite? Four. All right. So four dice. I rolled a five. What does that mean? It means you keep your footing. So, oh, good. so you successfully passed. Perfect. After Christy recovered, or Madame Zolster recovered from losing her footing, she still has smooth. So, where are you going? I'm gonna keep going forward. Alright, to an empty spot. You fell off the board. Ooh, I found the graveyard. And another what event occurred. It, it says when exiting, you must attempt a sanity roll of four. If you fail, lose one knowledge, but continue, but continue moving. moving. And I got an event card. Outside, you must get outside. Fly to freedom! <laughs> oh! Each explorer in the garden's graveyard tower, on the balcony, or in a room with an outside facing window must attempt a sanity roll. Yeah. Just after everybody outside. Oh, I'm like, trying to steal everyone's sanity, guys. I think we know who the traitor probably is going to be. I think Shane at the beginning of the intro made a prediction. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's a correct. Well, I was traitor last time. On your sanity, which is four. All right, <laughs> one, and that a terrible roll. Like a, a loose footing again, or something. You jump to sneakers. the patio. If it isn't in the house, each room uh, stack for. Wait, search the room, stack for it. Put it in the house and shuffle that stack. Yeah, but it's already out. So yeah. You just teleport to the patio. Yep. Yeah. That's it. You don't uh, one die for physical damage. Oh, okay. I didn't think it would get that easy. I know. So let's see. One. So what are you going to choose? My might. All right. So you're going to go down one for might. Now, the only other person who has to do this again is Lance, yet again. Go ahead, Lance. How many dive? Four for my sanity. Okay, let's see what you get. If you're safe again. No, you only one. get one. So one. the exact same thing. So, yep, you go to the same spot. To the patio. To the patio, and you lose one die of physical damage. I'll go down on my No, you have to roll that first. Oh, I gotta roll. Someone's trying to cheat. Maybe you're the traitor. No. Traitor! 
<laughs> Never know. It's eight. Right, let's see if uh, one. Same thing. So I'll go down on my speed. All right. Christy chose to stay where she is because she don't want to lose any more damage possibly. <laughs> so it's on to my turn. So the lovely Flash Williams, he is got a speed of five. So he's going to go. I don't even know where I'm going to go. There's only one more opening on the ground. Yeah. The one more opening, which I don't know where I'm going to go. Where am I going to go? Oh, Flash is confused because Flash is not really that smart. Flash is just going to move up to the upper floor. Three... And his speed is five, so he gets to choose one more. So Shane, hit me up for an upper floor. All right, which way are you going? Uh, let's go this way. All right. You get a tower. Ooh, and I also get an event card. Do the card, which is called Angry Being. Uh, it emerges from the slime on the wall next to you. So what I got to do is just I got to roll my speed and compare it to the charts. Five, five die. Ooh, and I got five. Five for five for five. And on the card, it tells me what the five or five plus, you get away. Game one speed. Ooh. So Flash just got a little more flashier. Flash is going to try to cross the tower, and but before he does it, he does have to do one thing. He has to roll his mighty and get three or higher to cross. If not, I don't move. So I got my three die here. See what happens. Oh, I get three or higher. So I get to move. So I can go into the other room, but I really can't do anything except if it's an omen card or oh, a card or something. Card. You're on the balcony. Oh, lovely. So I may just trigger the haunt right now. So I got the bloodstone. So this bloodstone says, Smooth and the deep green of the midnight forest. The stone is veined with crimson. They say you can't get blood from the stone. They didn't ask this one. So pretty much what this means is once per turn, I may lose one from any trait and add two die, maximum eight, to your trait rolls. And again, it's an omen, so I have to do a haunt roll. So right now we're at four, so I have to roll six die, and hopefully I get four or higher. Okay, let's see if I can get the hunt not triggering. Oh, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. I blew the hunt away. Psh, no problem, because Flash is really fast. That's why they call him Flash. Keisha's turn with... Professor Longfellow. So, Longfellow, where are you going? Uh, foyer, foyer, and up the staircase. So, you're going to use the plant yeah. to get up the stairs? It's a little yeah. quicker? Yeah, well, the plant all, right. all the way to the roof. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, you're going to go to the roof, or are you going to go to the upstairs? To the roof. To the roof, okay. So, transport yourself. That's one move. So, that's one move, yep. So... That has, uh, roof landing has text there, so is anything going to impact you? Um, I don't think so. We went up to the roof landing and the text there that we were reading, it don't really affect her per se right now, but what it does is you can take pretty much any upper floor and put it onto the roof too as well. So an upper floor can be treated as a roof landing too as well. But, so Keisha, which way are you going? This way. That way? All right, so we got a tile there. And it's not an omen card, thank goodness. It is an event card, and it says Widow's Walk. Again, this here is part of the new expansion of Widow's Walk. So stand by, and we'll read what it is, and we'll be back here shortly. Any further, this new tile from the expansion Widow's Walk, it says add one to the result of knowledge rolls here, and subtract one from the result of speed rolls here, minimum zero. So again, this can give you benefits, or it can take them away from you. So it is a good and bad tile. Keisha just drew uh, the event card, lights out. This here is uh, not a really good card for Keisha. So pretty much to sum it all up is it knocks her speed down to one because she has to wait till somebody gives her more batteries because the batteries fell out of her, her flashlight. So her objective now is to try to make it to another explorer that is close to her by only moving one, one space per turn. And then that way she can discard this afterwards. But... If she had the candle or was in the furnace room, then she'd just discard this card automatically. But she's not there, so she's on the same landing, though, as uh, Shane, Zoe. So hopefully Shane won't be so mean and just, you know, move to her or wait there until she moves. <laughs> you heard it, so Keisha's in trouble. So I'm probably going to head that way and give her some batteries. Uh, I got a speed of four, so that's two. And I have to end in her space, right? Right. 
All right, so I'm just going to move over here and then probably move back. So. All right, so you're going to draw another tile and see what happens. Hopefully it's not an omen card. I got the sewing room. Oh, and it's an item and dumb, dumb waiter. All right, I got the sewing room. If I end my turn here, I may discard an item card and gain one physical trait if it's below its starting value. Yeah, so... You can pretty much stay there, and then Keish can go to you if you want to be nice. Well, and that, that's what I was thinking. Or I could just leave and go back. To yeah, you could then... use the dumb waiter actually, and you could yeah, transport your way that far away. down to here, which is the arsenal. So anyhow, oh, you I don't want to go that far. Okay. I think you should stay there. So what item did you get there? Uh, I got the adrenaline shot, the syringe. Uh, containing a strange fluorescent liquid. And before I make any freight roll, I can use this item and get a plus four to that roll. Ah, oh, that's a really good card. A uh, lot better than Keisha's. Yeah, no, definitely. He's gonna be a nice guy, and he's go and he, well, I should say she. Zoe is going to go to uh, Professor Longfellow and, you know, relieve him by giving him some batteries. You're such a nice guy. Nice them, girl. I keep them in my little teddy bear. It's True. A, it's a teddy rock spin. Teddy Ruxpin, how old are you? I'm, I'm 12. Okay. Well, wait, wait, sorry, I'm 8. You're 8. He's okay, 12. so obviously this game is from the 1980s then. Yes, apparently. Okay. Where are you going? Lance, what are you going to do? I'm going to go over to the left, where I am. All right. So, and so... To the dumb waiter right over yeah. here. I'll move for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to the dumb waiter. And going upstairs to meet up with the rest of the group. And I think you still have some more moves left. He does. There's moves left over there, Lance. I'm going to move one tile over to the right. This is a really scary angle for Maggot Beard. Could be. <laughs> so on the nursery. The nursery. Uh-oh. So he has to read what's on the tile, and also he's going to have to do the omen check. Okay. If you end your turn here, gain one sanity. If it's below its starting value, lose one sanity. If it's above its starting value. So what's your sanity at? Yeah. My sanity is, is at starting? four. And it's at starting? Yes. So you gain one sanity. Nice. What's and now you have to grab an omen card, uh, read the omen card, and then we have to do the haunt roll. Omen card. The madman. Companion. A raving, throthing... Frothing Madman. Gain two might and lose one sanity now. Lose two might and gain one sanity if you lose custody of the Madman. This omen can't be dropped, traded, or stolen. Alright, so you have to change your traits there first off. Mm -hmm. And I just got a really bad feeling in the pit of my stomach that when you do the hot roll that the... I think it's going to be triggered this time. We're at five. Oh, We're at five. We're going to hunt roll. We are at five right now. So let's see if it goes off. And it oh, oh nice. no. Okay, so the pit in my stomach obviously wasn't... I thought that we were going to trigger the hunt. I think I have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Thomas, it is your turn. All right. So I'm going to continue on through the theater to the next side. And you've gone the ballroom with an event card. Awesome. Oh, so I'll grab an event card. And it says rotten. The smell in this room, it's horrible. It smells like death, like, like blood. <laughs> A slaughterhouse smell. You must attempt a sanity roll. Five plus, troubling odors. So Seven you have to do a sanity roll and uh, based on the chart, it's going to tell you to do something. Make your roll. You are in the balcony right now. Oh, no, no, that's no, me. Okay. Oh, yes, oh, that's there. right. Oh, My bad. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so, Thomas, All right, let's, see here. let's see what happens. What you get? I got two. So, what does that so I lose one might. So, little Timmy. Loses one might. Poor little Timmy. Poor, poor little Timmy. I'm gonna head to the right. He has a little bit more, so he's gonna go. Oh, right into the coal chute. Wow. And this cool coal chute is cool. 
It's a one-way slide to the basement landing. So guess what? Bye-bye, little fella. In the basement landing, he goes. He has two more moves. So what are you going to do, Thomas? I'm going to go this way. Oh, that's the chasm. Oh, Ooh, lovely. But no omen card or nothing. No, you just so, have to make a speed roll of three plus to get across. Oh, that should be pretty easy for little Tommy Timmy. Mm -hmm. Thomas. Tiny Tim. Let's see, Let's see what happens. Oh, oh yeah, you're you're smooth. But you now anybody who gets to the chasm has to do the exact same thing. Now you're the storm seller. Oh. Ooh, storm seller and you it's a it's dumb waiter item. as well as an item card. I got the teapot. A porcelain teapot with a motif of delicate pink flowers. It grants wishes at a price. Once during your turn, when an explorer in your room, including yourself, takes physical damage, you may draw an item card. If you are or become the trader, shuffle this card into the item stack. All right, so if you're a trader, you lose the card. Yep. So it's a powerful card unless you're the trader. Mm -hmm. All right, so Thomas got one more move. Where are you going to go? I'm going to go the only way that I can go. Into the cave. And I get an event card. Uh, and there's also text on the cave. So let's see what the text said. Next on to the, uh, the cave is if you enter and exit this room on your turn, you're going to lose one die of physical trait. So, uh, you know, as Shane kind of nicely pointed out to as well, it's a really good idea to probably stay in that room to end your turn. Now, I know that was your last turn. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to read the uh, event card. But again, if Thomas... Still had more moves, probably better if he just stayed where he is. Oh, yeah. All right, so what's your event card say? Okay, I've got lightning strikes. You count the seconds from when you see the flash. Second. All explorers on the roof or in an outside room must an attempt must attempt a might roll. That's everybody. <laughs> and then, uh, according to the chart. Off of Christy, she's in the patio, so she has to do a might roll. What's your might, Christy? Um, since I've lost one, I'm now at three. You're at three, so three die, and you'll have to see what happens. Well, that was an actually pretty good roll. It was a five. So what happened there, Thomas? Absolutely nothing. Nice. Yay. got a four or higher. Clock to roll is Flash. He's on the balcony. So my might is three, so I get three die. And I get one. That is really bad. So what happens to me? You only take a point of physical damage. Oh, okay, so I think I'm going to drop down my speed from 6 to 5 because I'm already pretty weak. Keisha, the Professor Longfellow. So Keisha, what is your might? Three. Three, so roll three die and see what happens compared to the chart. You get three. What did she get? Three, like that, is take one point of damage. Oh, so one point of any damage you want. So you have to drop one of your stats. It's physical. It's physical. Oh, it's got to be physical. Yeah, be physical. Yeah, be physical. So, so might or speed. Fight. So you're at four and three, so probably, yeah, good choice. All right, next on the chopping block is Shane. So Shane is in the same room as Keith. That's what you get for helping her, you know? I know, well, yeah, that's, that's the way it rolls. I got three might as well, which is pretty impressive for an eight-year-old girl. True. <laughs> She's strong as Flash. I got oh, yeah, oh, this is horrible. Oh, right. You have to take two points of physical damage. Two points. Oh. Two points of physical damage. So I'll take one might, one speed, which doesn't actually drop my stats. Anymore. Yeah, no, nope, that's good. All right, so I think we got everybody covered for that. So that was a really bad oh, turn. Oh, oh yeah, the lance, lance. maggot bear. That's nursery. right. So you four yeah. you're in the nursery. So what is your uh, your might? My might is at four. Okay, so four die, and let's see what happens. Two. 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 Okay, you take one point of physical damage. One point of physical damage. And we all hate Thomas. I'll put it on Mommy. my might. You'll put it on your might, so what did that drop you down to? Four. Four, okay, so that wasn't that bad of a hit for you. Yeah. But yeah, Thomas, thank you very much for that. That was really great. You're very welcome. Where are you gonna go, Christy? So I'm gonna come to the arsenal and take the dumb waiter upstairs. And I'm going to, oop, wrong way. Explore this way. All right. Solarium. And it is an item card in text. Let's see what the text said. It says, if you end your turn here, you may discard one item card and gain one sanity. Okay, and you also pick up an item card too as well. Item card. Item card. Ooh, I got a rabbit's foot. Ooh, that's a good one. Not so lucky for the rabbit though. 
once during your turn. <laughs> that just fit in perfectly. <laughs> you can re-roll one die. You must keep the second roll. Cool. Okay, well that, that's really good. Yeah. So it stays on you. Sure does. Just turn and all Flash is going to do is he's going to explore further. So he's going to go to the balcony and hopefully you don't get normal card. Oh, he don't. He gets the attic and it is... It's a little glare on the... Uh, when you exit, you just need to make a speed roll of 3+. plus. Oh, okay. And Flash's speed is down to four, 5. Yeah, but if you fail, you lose one might. All right. And there's no other way to get out except for this way. So if I want to continue, I'm going to have to make that. And you know what? I'm going to make it. Why? You have to do the event first. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Creepy crawlies. Oh, uh, this don't look good. A thousand bugs spill out onto your skin, onto your clothing. Ew. And it's in your hair. Oh, jeez. That's it. I'm shaving my head. All right. So I got an attempt to sanity roll. So my sanity is three, and I got to roll and see what happens to the chart. Oh, I got five. So I think that's a good one. And number five says, you blink, and they're gone. Gain one sanity. Oh, yeah. So I go up one. So I'm going up to four, which is pretty good. I'm in the attic. I have to, to exit that room, I have to make a speed roll. I get to get a three plus. So my speed, because I'm flash, I get five. So let's see if I get a three plus. And I don't. I fail miserably. But you lose one might. And you get to continue moving. Now. Oh, lovely. So I still get to move, but I lose one might. That sucks. That dropped flash now. He was at three. Not the green three, but the white three. Down to two. So now you can see that little skull symbol. So, if I lose any more might, what's going to happen to poor Flash here is he's going to die, he's going to go back to normal stats, and he's going to start back into the entrance hall. But, the problem is, is that if the honk goes off before I lose one more... <laughs> Come on, Keisha! <laughs> Why do you get the giggles? Check out your honk? <laughs> Keisha! Tell everybody that's watching. What's so funny? <laughs> no? <laughs> right. What Flash kindly did is he took his hit so he continued moving. So again, I'm going to explore here and see what happens. And it's not an omen card. We're good. And I'm in the bedroom. Oh, I can have a little rest if I want to. But I get an event card. Let's see what the event card said. I don't think Flash is very lucky. Because he, what he got right now is the Burning Man. So, just to sum it all up, a fiery man ran through the bedroom, and his flesh fell off, exposing his bone, and it just caught fire, caught fire to the bed, caught fire to the floor, caught fire to everything. So, what I have to do is I have to roll a sanity roll to see if Flash is going to survive. What is so <laughs> funny? His bones. Oh man, exposing his bones on fire, bud. Uh, <laughs> um, I think. Uh... <laughs> right. Okay. Anyhow, so yeah, I have to make a sanity roll to see what happens. So let's see what happens. My sanity is four, and I'm going to roll this and consult the chart. Ooh, I get five, and a four plus. You feel a little hot under the collar. But otherwise, fine. Gain one sanity. Damn, I'm getting pretty sane, but I'm still weak. Back to Keisha's turn, which is uh, Professor Longfellow, but he has that uh, card that's working against him, but Shane was nice enough to go and give him batteries. So, on Keisha's turn, what are you doing, Keisha? Nothing. Nothing, that's right. Because all you can do now is just discard the card and your turn ends. So that was a pretty quick turn for you. Girls turn Zoe. So Zoe, where are you going? Uh, I'm gonna head up this direction, and I've revealed the drawing room. Ooh. When discovered, draw one card of any type. Hmm. Do I want an omen card? No, I don't. I want no. An omen no, 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 please. All right. So, oh, yeah. and it's also yeah. a dumb waiter there too, as well. We got a lot of dumb waiters on the in the house there. So this must have been a pretty big house full of a lot of dumb waiters. You know, like. I'm not even gonna make that joke. So we're just gonna move on. So Shane, what did you draw? Um, I got this music box. It's a handcrafted antique. It plays haunting melody that gets stuck in your head. 
Oh. oh yeah. Once per turn, I can open or close the music box. While well, the music box is open, any explorer or monster with a sanity trait that enters or starts its turn in the same room must make a sanity roll of four plus. If they fail, the explorer or monster ends its turn and is mesmerized by my music. So if a monster haunt is revealed, that can be very beneficial to you. Yes. Definitely. That is a really good card to hang on to. I've had it the last couple times I've played it. Yeah. Had a chance to actually so it. maybe this time you will. So we're going to... Uh, do you have any other well, movements? I definitely have more moves. That was only one move. All right. Let's see I what else you're going to do. So. Oh. Little Zoe. I'm going to explore out this way. Oh, and you got another event card. That's a, it's a locked room. I have to put a lock token on each door of this room to enter or exit. Three lock door, I must make a knowledge roll of three plus to attempt to remove the lock. Oh, so you got to put a lock in each door and there's three right, doors. So I look up for three lock tokens. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I ran into this one other time we played and the locks can be very troublesome. I got trapped once and I was in there for like four turns. I couldn't get out. <laughs> That's right. All right, the event card I got was Debris. The plaster falls from the walls and ceiling. I must attempt a speed roll to get out of the way. If I'm buried, I'm stuck in a locked room and have to wait for somebody else to come save me. Which probably won't happen. Mm. That makes sense. And you are locked. In, totally. Yeah, so this may be a repeat. <laughs> of Possibly. Another time. Do your speed roll to see if you're buried. So, at least you're keeping the... Uh, the, the rubble to one room anyhow because it's locked. Yeah, it's not like Thomas where I just screw everybody over on their turn. Yeah, so what's right. your speed? I got a four for my speed and I managed to get a three, so three plus. I dodge the plaster and gain one speed. Oh, so you go fast, but you dodge, but you're still locked. Lock one of these locks, but I need to get a knowledge roll of three plus and I only have two for my knowledge, so. Hey, I got a four. Nice. Oh, lucky me. So you get to unlock one of the doors? Right. I'll unlock this one here, which puts up a spiral staircase. Ooh, that's very interesting. Uh, I may spend two spaces of movement to move to any landing. Nice. Last turn is you're just going to move to another room? I am. I'm going to move this direction. Oh, and it's an omen and another, and another dead, dumb waiter. Dumb waiter. But this, I'll, this also has a thing and it says once per game if you end your turn here put your explorer token here and gain one mental trait yay oh that's actually not bad at all all right so i decided the uh, mental trait to take is knowledge that'll put me back to where i was when i started the game all right that's good and you left your explorer token right there i did so and now I you have to do the omen card. card and the haunt so let's see what happens all right so the omen I got was a girl companion, a girl trapped alone, you free her. Uh, I gain one sanity and one knowledge now, or I lose one sanity and one knowledge if I lose this companion. The omen can't be dropped, traded, or stolen, and I have to make a haunt roll. Oh, okay. So you go up now, but you can go down later, and you can do a haunt roll. We're on six now for the haunt. So let's see, Shane, if you trigger the haunt, or are we safe? We triggered. definitely trigger the haunt. Finally triggered it after turn or haunt six. So now we're gonna look at the books. We're gonna figure out who is the traitor, and we're gonna go on from there. So just hold on one minute there, and we will continue the game. Is it gonna be you? Are you gonna be the traitor? Maybe. Or is it gonna be you? Are you? Are you? Are you? I hope it's not me. Let's see what happens. In the book, and the traitor is none other. Then, Shane, da, da, da. the little girl Zoe, and the name of the, the haunt is called? Ollie Ollie Oxen Free. All right. Uh, you've come face to face with the spirit of a little girl who giggles and jumps inside your body, which is also a little girl, which is weird. Uh, you instantly feel youthful, playful, and vengeful. Memories flash into your mind of a game of hide and seek where you waited and waited to be found, but the only one who came to find you was death. In this new body, you can now finish your game. Oh, lovely. So you got, like, upgraded, like, from the from movie the little Jason girl X. By a little girl. Yeah. yeah, lovely. So you're, like, super little girl now. It's it's a so, Shane, you need to get out of here. I do. Make your plan while us survivors will plot against you to win the game. Stay well. tuned and find out who wins.
Board Game Maniacs. Click on the link below to watch the second part to this video.